speaking of predictions, we've gotten to the point where I think we should make our predictions for this series. Do you want to go first? Sure. Are we just doing like... Yeah, who who's going to win and, and how many games and, and why? Any thoughts on it? Man, I hate to say this as a Kings fan, but as an objective man, I think the Warriors in six... That's because it's it's the Golden State Warriors, man. And, and the Kings don't have the experience. Uh, Warriors are heating up at the right time. They're looking good. Um, and it's just, they're just going to show to be too much for the Kings in the Kings' first playoff series. Yeah, in 17 years, but the first playoff series as this unit together. Um, and my cat feels differently. She's shaking her head, if you can hear it. But um, <laughs> it's just... I think at the end of the day, the Kings are going to learn a lot from the series. Kind of like I was saying earlier, they're going to learn what it takes to win and be one of the elite teams in the NBA. And they're going to come back next year and they're going to go a lot further. But it's always tough in that first round as the first year as a unit, especially against the defending champs. What about you? Yeah, I'm essentially the same boat, maybe a little less popular with Kings fans, but I have Golden State in five games. I just think that, like I said, I think if you want to, I will, I'll put it this way. If the Warriors are going to win this, or the, if the Kings are going to win this series, because I just don't necessarily believe, as much as this would be the key to winning this series in all series, and this should definitely be the goal going forward, I just don't think that the Kings are going to turn on the defense at such a magnitude that they're going to be able to beat the Warriors four times, let alone more than once or twice. And... I just think that they're going to have to rely on their offense just being what it is, which is one of the best offenses in history, the best offense in the league. And what does that get them? I think that only gets them one game. I think one game where, you know, the the, the, the Kings are just lighting it up and maybe they get some benefits because the Warriors turn the ball over a lot. Um, if the Kings can take care of the ball and be smart with it, but it, it just feels like breadth of experience, the – depth the ammunition for the rosters it just seems like there's it's a lot of things have to go the king's way to win a lot of these games um i think a lot of them will be close but you know i I just i just think that for as good of the kings are on offense the warriors are pretty darn good too i mean like this is a top 10 offensive rating team and defensive rating wise they finished 14th, but over the last 10 games, they are only they, they had a 108 defensive 108.6 defensive rating, which was second only behind Boston. And again, it's like we're talking about. It, it's like I really kind of view the Warriors as the most dangerous team in the West. They're like right up there with Boston and Milwaukee. In the because I don't really think that there is unless proven otherwise. I don't really know if there is another team in the West that can do that. And I think it'll be a fun series. I think it'll be really hard fought. I don't think, again, like we said earlier, I don't think it'll be like a blowout necessarily. But the Warriors, it's just hard not to, it's just hard to see the, the Kings winning multiple games. And I think another factor that comes into it is it's like how much of a home court advantage are the Kings going to have? I mean, and would that even matter? The Kings have left a lot of potential wins on the floor at home. And also you want to talk about the Warriors being a really bad road team. Is this a r- typical road situation, a, you know? an hour and 45 minute drive in a city where, you know, there's a lot of other fans show up just in the playoffs will be different, obviously, I guess maybe, but you just kind of start going down the line and you're just like, I don't know. It's hard not to go with golden state. And maybe I'm too harsh by saying five, but you gave them, you gave the Kings a couple wins. Um, <laughs> But I just think they'll split the first two, and then the Warriors will just win out. Yeah, it'll. I mean, it'd be crazy if the Kings could pull it off. And this might be one of the hardest <laughs> series they face too, if they move on from the Warriors. I mean, you can argue it just gets easier in the West from there. That's um, a great way to look at it. If they can get over this hill, it's it's broad horizons at that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. And then everything we everything we've said about experience and stuff like that has to take a back seat because that if you can beat the Warriors, even if the Warriors do just like struggle, like Wiggins doesn't come back looking like himself in any capacity, if they turn the ball over enough and allow the Kings to be the bigger team on the boards and really punish them, which is another problem for the Warriors too, is their rebounding. 
And if that stuff can happen and then all of a sudden, you know, the Kings are just, they're a runaway train. Mm-hmm. So. I think so too. It's game past this first series though. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. But I think just to kind of second your point, I mean, if you're going to want to lose to anybody, you want to lose to the best. Not just for narrative's sake, like, oh, we lost to the defending champs and potentially the Western Conference champs. But also you take into account the actual, like, having Kings players, Kings core players, seeing Warriors core players that have either been there for many years or just a few years, and, and seeing how they comport themselves, how they act, how how serious they get when things are their 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 most fragile and their most important. I just think seeing that and experiencing that firsthand will it'll lend a lot to Sacramento and, and uh, what's ahead. 